Welcome to another episode of The Top 5. Let's get started right off the bat here. And my favorites, I recorded a couple matches I enjoyed. Let's start off with So Much Money! This is me versus Matt Charges from Tiberium Horrors. He definitely has significant level advantage over me. <coughs> but levels aren't everything, as we've learned from past videos. This was a challenge match for me. I think that's one of the reasons why I recorded it. That and I had a ton of money during most of this match. And because I was my best counters were my cheaper units, I kept building the counters. And my money was just building. It was ridiculous. And a lot of people will make the mistake of, ooh, I've got a lot of money. I need to build an expensive unit. But the expensive unit's not necessarily the best unit. And because it's not the best unit, sometimes those cheaper units will do a better job. And they are, even though they are cheaper, they're definitely much better for their value, they can even be more better than those expensive units, and you don't want to spend that extra money. Anyway, and uh, he had me on rifles, but I got out that second rifle and, you know, managed to push him back. He didn't get his out of time. Got some scarabs, got my rifles out of there while the scarabs took care of the APC. But, or not APC, I'm sorry, the <laughs> rhino. He left his guy in fire. I thought I was going to die from the scare, but again, such a huge level difference, you know, like 9 or 10s. Yeah, 10s versus 7. <clears throat> and I mean, I, I get forced to build my p buggies just to be able to counter his infantry. And he's going, obviously, for uh, pit bulls to counter them, which I expected. So I built attack bikes. He does a good job... Uh, Buffing his guy. He would have won against my attack bikes, but he changed and fought the buggy. That was a mistake. And then I'm countering the pit bulls with rocket squads, um, which are also a soft counter for the rhinos, but I'm still building, you know, attack bikes to deal with them. So it's a mixture of attack bikes and rocket squads. Uh, just trying to get, you know, the right units to attack the right units. Um, And uh, here he could actually get the missile if I don't kill his guy in time. This is really close. He actually almost gets the first missile. It's very well done of him, but I managed to push him off the bottom, pause it. He gets back on it. I went on the top left, so now I've got two spots. So that that is the risk when you uh, don't push in, and you're just trying to go for that missile, and you leave guys that are going to lose. If you don't get it in time, <coughs> you get pushed out. Um, and he's focused on the top right, you know, winning that pretty good while I'm focused more on the bottom middle. Um, and trying to protect my obelisk. And then I do some body blocking with my tank. Get that first missile. Now here, he's pumping out rocket squads. Now I've got buggies to fight the rocket squads, riflemen to fight the rocket squads, and the jet troopers. Um, because my buggy got stuck fighting it. Bringing up a tank to replace my attack bikes that were about to die. Uh, up top... I'm just trying to, you know, keep them from my harvesters, counter them if they can. Got riflemen to try to help with the rocket squads. My other riflemen are just body blocking his vehicles right now while my obelisk does some good damage to them. Uh, but they end up dying, and I take up both the top spots. Um, I really didn't see anything to push the tank on, and then I was focused more on the bottom here. Uh, that was probably a little bit of bad microing. I mean, I did body block him there. I'm still trying to push into the middle. He's got the top right. I wasn't too worried about the points until right about here where it was at the uh, halfway mark and the missile was getting close. Um, and I knew that my tank was going to lose up top. I was more concerned with uh, the bottom. That that tank build was a bad mistake for me. I would see all this infantry. I'm like, okay, riflemen, riflemen. Basic riflemen, cheap guys. And I've got, again, so much money at this point. And these basic riflemen are doing wonders for me. And he's he gets that second missile. So, I mean, it's... it's Good match. He starts going for... This was a mistake I hit. I've got no air units. Why would he build an anti-air? I guess he's just trying to go after my base now. <clears throat> that that was a huge mistake because two missiles have gone off. That third missile is going to go off quickly. Okay. Um, I've got these rocket squads trying to, you know, protect my base. I'm not too worried about it until it gets to that halfway mark. Still throw up the obelisk to take care of vehicles. And... Um, I've got the rifleman, you know, making his other guy, his infantry need to push off. He's... Trying to deal with my obelisk. I'm getting infantry on everything. Uh, and again, he builds another one of those anti-air units. He just uses it to hold the point. If Instead of spending 100 on that air unit, he just spent 30 
on a rhino, he would have killed those riflemen or I would have had to run away. Um, instead, he's just standing there and he can't use the jet troopers against riflemen. You know, so they're just going to stall it at most. So that's what he's doing. He's just throwing it up, trying to stall, push off my buggy. I've got two rocket squads killing one up top. Um, I've just got massive infantry, just cheap infantry, riflemen and rocket squads. And so more money than I know what to do with. And he, he just now finally decides to build a rifleman. I mean, he's... And another air unit! There's no air! There's no point in that! He's got two 100-cost guys. And honestly... His, a basic rifleman would do better than either of those air units in bo in both fields. Um, that was that's what cost him the game. He never pushed me off of that top right. I had it neutral, and even though he neutralized the bottom middle fast with that air unit, I saw the top left. He he wasn't winning his battles because he was spending his money, and I wasn't. I was building what I needed to build most of the time. When I messed up, I messed up building, you know, <clears throat> a tank that might have become necessary. That, because he went so heavy on infantry and air, became unnecessary. But, you know, built one and still used it to the best of its ability. Uh, I mean, I was pumping out riflemen, and I, I, I was sitting on top of, like, three, four hundred Tiberium. I had the money to do uh, different things in there. But, because he was building, like, jet troopers and air units... <clears throat> my rock, my riflemen and rocket squads were really the best way to go. Uh, the scarabs weren't really doing enough damage to take out his air unit. The scarabs would have lost to his rhinos that he, I thought he was going to pump out more of, which is, again, why I had the occasional tank, but he didn't. Uh, uh, it's just... He, I, I don't know what he was thinking. I don't. <clears throat> but, that being said, his micromanagement was pretty good on a lot of things. He was going after my base, going after my harvesters. He was trying to keep the battle all over the place. Which, <laughs> because he didn't have enough to really put the pressure on the base, I don't think he should have gone for that. Um, except maybe as a distraction. But it, The rest of him, him splitting up, going after my harvesters and all the three points, he was doing really good on it. I think he was doing the best he could. It was just his choice of what units he was building. That really put a damper on him. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, moving on from that, we've got Rush Block. I don't even remember what happened here. But it's Chaos Theorist. I've fought this person several times. They've won some, I've won some. And uh, I believe they went straight for a rush based on the name. And look, yep, attack bikes. That's a good rush unit. It can get across the map fast. <clears throat> but a basic rocket squad could screw them over. And I had the rifleman, saw what he did. I brought my rifleman up to body block to keep his guys back. Then I tried to bump out the rocket squads to block his other set of bikes. But my rocket squads appeared in the wrong spot. The bikes got up there. I was kind of in trouble at this point. Uh, trying to do what I can to get that one attack bike group out. Move the harvester down, the rocket squads up to body block where he's got to go all the way around again. Anyway, and I got my other rocket squads now to body block on the other side, bringing my harvester back, moving the other rocket squads up. I'm doing everything I can to just keep his bikes away from my harvester so his rush becomes a failure. <clears throat> now, he actually does a really good thing, though. He gave up on it entirely and got out his harvester. So now my harvester is weak, and he's probably caught up to me on money. <coughs> I pulled mine a little too far away from the Tiberium, but I was more concerned with not letting him have that 100. He's doing a great job pumping out some cheap ride performance, so he's got people on all the uh, the platforms and defending his harvester. Um, I'm obviously pumping out the counters for those with my rhinos. He pumps out a tank to counter them. Again, he's doing a very good job. I build something to counter his tank. So we, we're doing a lot of really good counters just back and forth right here. Now his other tank, though, instead of pushing in to try to take out my MLRS, went around and take out my other Rhino up top. He brought in attack bikes. That was very good of him, actually. I got rocket squads tried to do the attack bikes. I didn't get to block them off. I was a little too slow there. But did get to damage his other attack bikes a little bit. He comes back, finish them off, bringing up rocket squads to protect the MLRS from the other side. And that's the good thing with the MLRS. It's great against vehicles, but it's weak against infantry and air. I bring my rocket squads, now I can keep air back. And that leaves only infantry for him to be able to use, which 
you know, until late game, not as not exactly powerful. That now he does bypass a lot of my guys while my rocket squads were attacking uh, his infantry, which was not good, uh, and take out my MLRS with his tank. You know, counter it with some basic rocket squads. Pitbull was just a quick thing I wanted to get out <clears throat> to in case I need to run for a point. And also, if he's attacking the rocket squads, Pitbull does just as much damage. Uh, and now it can body block those riflemen. Got my other MLRS. Uh, out to try to deal with his tanks. He's buffing real good. I've got uh, Rhinos, again, to try to take out infantry and protect my rocket squads. He's going around to take out my MLRS again, but I've got rocket squads pincering him. He might get my MLRS here. Nope, I managed to defend it. And I've got two points as well. He's got double harvesters. He's going for something late game. This was a very risky move on his part, and I think it cost him the match. One extra unit, he could have... You know, either take the top left, neutralize the bottom. He could have done something. At the very least, kept me from <clears throat> neutralizing his. And if he kept one other one neutral, then it would have paused the timer. He literally gave up the game to get that second harvester in hopes of getting out something big, which I never even saw. <clears throat> his rush, he did an amazing job with the rush. Um, and... When the rush failed, how he moved into the harvester, prevented me from getting Tiberium, then got Tiberium of his own, kept it pretty even. I had a little bit of a unit advantage, but not really a money advantage. So he did a really good job, but I did a good job blocking, protecting the harvester. Uh, yeah, and looking at his army, his late game he was planning to pump out with the double harvester build was going to be cyborgs, air units, and flame tanks. Tanks, air, and infantry. Which I did have the ability to counter the... Uh, the flame tanks with the MLRS. My infantry would have held off the cyborgs. Um, but I would have probably had some problems with cyborgs. And his air unit, I could have dealt with the Pitbull's rocket squads actually pretty decently. Or air units of my own, I could have easily built real cheap. Which also would have been a good thing to help with the cyborgs. So I probably would have done air and riflemen. Um, and still kept up an MLRS and tried to push forward with that. And as fast units, I could have kept things neutral. <coughs> but he definitely would have eventually been able to push me back with those units. The problem was that it was too late in the game to do it. He needed to focus on those points now with what he had, and he didn't do that. He gave me an opening, and in that opening, I won the match. But that being said, you know, still very good player. Uh, now... I just call this one Sam, because I fought this guy a lot. And again, he's beaten me a bunch. He's probably actually beaten me more than I've beaten him. <coughs> but as you can tell, just looking at him, significantly higher level cards and heroes. He's running 10s almost across the board with 1-9 here. And I'm running, you know, 8s and 9s. Uh, two eights, and then the rest are 9s across the board. And I can't tell if those 10 units are upgraded, because it doesn't really say properly if units are upgraded just heroes anymore. I think that might be a glitch. But, uh, yeah, so he should win just based on level. He's got a significant level advantage over me. <coughs> but we have a good match, and I actually managed to pull off a victory this time. I think I've shown him off in some of my other vi videos before as well. Like I said, he has beaten me more than I've beaten him. He he's, he's definitely a good player. He starts off with the scout. Speed this up a little. So I've got a little advantage at the beginning, but he has level advantage. Get out my double rifleman, try to do two on V1. He falls back. Stands in the Tiberium. Not really smart of him. Uh, I bring in my Rhino. Try to move in my guys that his air units are killing so they at least do something. Bring in a pit bull. Try to help deal with the Venom, but at that point he'd already gotten a... Uh, Bigger air unit. He's got rocket squads to deal with my pit bull. I'm trying to run away. Get out my MLRS again. Same combo with this army. This I this used to be an APC MLRS army, um, but the APC was too slow to move around to protect the MLRS from air, unlike the rhinos and the uh, pit bulls. <clears throat> I, this was a good move. I put my pit bulls practically together while moving to double their firepower. Um, that is very useful all the time. He does manage to get my MLRS, but I've got some good field control, neutralizing two points while the missile fires. And he does win those battles, but I still got the missile. 
Um, I'm bringing in my weak pit bull to get it killed and in, to try to protect the MLRS while it does its shots. It shoots at Rocket Squad, so that's not very good. But he doesn't have any vehicles for me to shoot him. Honestly, part of me was hoping to kill his harvester with it. I also had another pit bull damaging his harvester as best I could. Tried to run away, get it behind the rocks. He chased it with air. Again, he does very good there. I'm going for some more pit bulls again, just like before. You know, try to take out his air. And I, I did a bad thing here. I went after his harvester. I should have gone after the third point. But I managed to somehow get it anyway. Because I think he overextended with the air. And then he left those flamethrowers just standing up on the top right. <coughs> Yeah, a lot of that was just luck and when I was turning the battle around for short periods of time. But he was countering me very well. Anyway, uh, let's move on to this. And I know I used the same army, I think, like three times out of this top five. The one with the MLRS. But I was playing it a lot. And <clears throat> also, somebody asked specifically if there was a good APC MLRS build. Uh, terror on the Discord. I said, well, I'm going to show some with my next top five. So pay attention. Um, and it, again, I gave up the APC with this build. It, it was fun to have that very tanky thing with the MRS behind it, but all they had to do was circumvent me with fast vehicles or air, and I was in major trouble. I had to have two APCs and an MRS, and that's expensive. That's an 80 cost, an 80 cost, and a 70 cost. So on one central area, you've got uh, 230... Tiberium worth of stuff just to defend one spot, which might not even necessarily be but a single point, perhaps two in some cases. <clears throat> and one good ion cannon can practically wipe that all out. Um, so you don't want to put too much investment there, and you want more mo maneuverability in case uh, you have to move something out, something in. <clears throat> I, I per actually prefer to be able to pump out the rocket squads to be able to pump out the cheap rhinos. Um, and to be able to use the Rhino speed and the Pitbull speed uh, to body block for the MLRS, if I even need the MLRS. Now, if you're going for APCs, they might not be good against uh, vehicles, but they'll last a while. Um, and they, uh, but they're, they're slow moving. You're not getting to the points in time if you got to get across the map. And a lot of things were my my APC. You know, I had it, or not APC. I'm sorry, Rhino. You know, I've got it. Running around doing stuff. I got another one just sitting on the top right. That's bad micro on my part. No, I'm blue. Okay, no, I got confused for a second because I was on the other side last game. But yeah, even here though, I'm MLRS behind the harvester doing its damage as a support. It's both anti tank and supportive. It's not great against infantry. I should have micro better with my rhino moved over and finished off this guy. Instead, I moved the MLRS and then brought another rhino in. Um, I think I forgot about that rhino just sitting up there. I think it was more like just to protect the harvester because he kept building the jet troopers to deal with my harvesters. And he's also using them to try to kill my MLRS, go for my base. <clears throat> so I've got just a bunch of rhinos trying to deal with his infantry, and I build a pit bull to deal with his one rhino uh, near my side to try to get you know base control. He goes for double harvesters. This is uh, a risky move at this point because if I get another missile, I think I went. No, nope, actually, neither of us have gotten a missile yet. We, we kept pushing it back and forth. Wow. Um, but I did get the first missile there because of that. Now he needs to get the next two with high-tech units and expensive units, but he's pumping out jet troopers to try to counter my rhinos um, and my pit bull, which, and my MLRS. That's going to counter practically everything I've got here. But doesn't mean I can't still fight them with my 30-cost guys and build infantry. <coughs> Now, he does manage to kill my harvester, use that money to get on a tech unit, plus he's still got the double harvester build. Yeah, those uh, jet troopers are expensive, but now he's got sandstorms he's pumping out with, and I'm I'm honestly kind of in trouble. Uh, so I start building rocket squads to counter his sandstorm. I've got my power, you know, trying to kill his jet troopers. I finally moved that one rhino down to do something. It, it does what stand up top. He brings over another high expensive tech unit, but this is where speed's important. It's too slow. He's going after infantry. Infantry are not the points. He needs to get fast units on those points immediately. And I don't think he makes it. No, he does make it. He pauses the timer. Um, I'm bringing over air units. Again, speedy, fast units. Uh, the only slow move, moving unit I have in this army is my MLRS, besides my harvester. And, you know, that's a supportive unit. It's supposed to be behind the lines anyway. 
at where it was at, it was starting to kill its harvesters, help cut off any more big vehicles. I had infantry, you know, to try to deal with any more of his sandstorm. So he had to build the uh, disruptors if he wanted to build big stuff, which was not a problem for my vehicles or my MLRS. <coughs> and I, I managed to have the point just long enough to fire that missile. And again, he needed to win the next two, and he didn't. He didn't get it. He was. I think too focused with my harvesters and fighting up top and then to actually fight over the points. And... But Ripti from the Northwest Alliance, still going to give him props. He did very good with his early game um, and being able to tack up still with the double harvesters, protect them while still harassing mine. Did very good with that, and he was still going after the points. I mean, like I said, early game, it took a long time before anybody even got you know a missile fired. Um, hell, I even thought I was him for a little bit, just watching him play. <clears throat> and the fact that he got out a Sandstorm and a Disruptor, which that combo is good against just about anything, you know, is is very, you know, telling. A lot of people will have problems against that combo, or the Zone Trooper Disruptor combo. A lot of people used to have problems with until they added the Inferno anyway. Um... The only reason I was able to defeat that combo is because he didn't have them together. He came in with one, which he needed to do to kill my harvester to try to get the other one and to, you know, push me back. Um, and then he came in with the other one, which I had a natural counter for with my MLRS. <coughs> anyway, so only because he came in one at a time. And he, he, again, speed was important. He didn't really have the time to wait and consolidate and bring in both of them. And then he'd have to choose between them. Like, he's going to fight over the harvesters to let me have the harvester field. And then he wouldn't be able to pump out a lot of reinforcements. Or he'd go after the zones to try to go for the missile. And if he didn't go for the zones, he would have lost. So I mean, he literally would have had to have gone for the middle zone with both of them and completely gave up on his harvesters. And then if I had destroyed his guys, he'd have a hard time rebuilding them. Uh, and I'd have tons of money, and that would not bode well for him. He probably would end up losing, honestly, either way. He was pretty well screwed at that point. Um, but he did a good job. You'll see a lot of high-end games. People don't go for a lot of tech units. <clears throat> That's because you could actually counter them with cheaper units. Why even bother spending 120 on a building, and then 120 on a unit that you can kill that unit with a 20 cost unit, or a 70 cost unit, or a 30 cost unit. You know, uh, his disruptor is 120 cost from 120 cost building. It lost to a 70 cost MLRS. It'll lose to a 60 cost tank. Um, that sandstorm also could lose to that MLRS, which is 70 cost, and if I've got a blocker in front of it and it gets too close. And it will lose to, like, two 20-cost rocket squads. You know, it's... They can be beaten by good micro and lower-end units. <clears throat> but they also have a lot more potential. And, and in some cases, they're going to win 1v1 a lot more often uh, for their high cost. But if you're still going to lose 2v1 and you're losing the Tiberium battle... You need that harvester that puts you down a full extra unit anyway. Tech units can be very awesome. <clears throat> but it is difficult to make them worth it. You know, that 130 cost unit, yeah, it might be that 20 cost or that 40 cost. Hell, it even might even beat two of them. But beating three or more, that's what it really has to do in order to even be worth it, or it has to last just long enough on a point with its extra durability, you know, or extra firepower to win the battle to turn it at just the right time to give you the missile fire and win the game. <coughs> um, going for two harvesters is a very difficult thing to do. You, you need to have an early game army and then be able to build up to it after the first missile. Like, immediately after the first missile fires, that's when you want to go through the weakness of building the extra harvester. Let him push you back. Let him have the fields. All he's doing is building up the timer for you if you're able to push him off, you know? So that is the opportune time to build that second harvester. Going for the third missile is not a good time to do it because it fires so fast. Oh, look, I've got the second harvester. Now I've got a lot of money. Now I spend that money, and I've lost the game before I could do anything with those big, slow-moving units. Or even pump one out, maybe. Um, they said his disruptor came out way too late. 
even if it was able to do a lot of damage, it wouldn't have turned the tide in his favor against my vehicles at the bottom and win him the match. Uh, <clears throat> so, but and he did it right too because he had the sandstorm, which was able to do something. Uh, he didn't wait till the third missile to pump out a second harvester. He had it going after the first missile, you know, around the second. And that's when you want to do. But you also, if you need to get that second missile or you're going to lose the game, that is not the time to go for a harvester. Unless you can, again, do it right after the first one fires. <coughs> so, I mean, there's there's some lessons to take home and to your games. If you're going to go for a tech building at all, you're, you're going to try to win without it for the first missile. And then if you win the first missile, oh, yeah, great. Now you can definitely go for a second harvester. You know, if you <clears throat> are doing your early game units and he's not putting any pressure on your harvester, you know, you might even go for one before the first missile. But don't, don't do it too late in the game. That's, that's just risky, especially if you've lost the first missile. Um... If you don't do it immediately after you lost the first missile, before it's even at the halfway mark, then you're just costing yourself again. If you wait till it's halfway and then you pump out a second harvester, you just gave him the second missile. If he's already got the first, he's got two. You know, even if you've got the first one, you know he might be able to turn around. Instead of you winning, you give him the opportunity to make a comeback if you don't do it at the right time. Immediately after the missile is fired, that's the key moment. Anyway, so now we're going to talk about this game, Wolfie. And it, Wolfie's someone else who's beaten me probably just as much as I've beaten him. I play him a lot. <coughs> but he went for, I call this big risk, because he went for a lot of tech units. And his start relies completely on infantry alone. If I had brought just nothing but flame troopers or snipers, um, he would be in massive trouble. A huge army of rhinos, he would be in massive trouble. And he's got to get out that second harvester before he can pump out anything good. He <clears throat> Also, I believe he started with the disruptor troops, which are great against infantry, but he's expecting me to start with infantry. What if I started with the new GDI air build? I had air units there. The only thing he could build is rocket squads to even try to fight them. And that's a 20 cost to fight off 10 cost. You know, that gives me a money advantage. Um... And not to mention, I'd have all the fields. I don't know, the, the, there's so much that could go wrong with that. It's a big risk. But if he, if I do go for infantry, or if I go for vehicles that he can actually hold off with his rocket squads and jet troopers, then he can get out a second harvester, hopefully at the right time. <coughs> or if he's harassing me, use the money to get out a second harvester, or while he's distracting me on my side of the field, get it out. Now, he went for the disruptors. He's... He's hoping I'm going for infantry, and I don't. So, big risk, big fail. Now, he didn't even go for a harvester, if you notice. He's going to take my harvester. He's hoping to hold off my infantry and attack my harvester. I didn't do infantry. He's trying to go straight for my harvester anyway and distract my guys. I ain't falling for it. Pull my harvester back. And again, because he's got good levels and stuff, <clears throat> he did manage to get my harvester hurt pretty good here. Um, but now I've got multiple guys. I'm think I didn't even realize what he was doing. So I, I thought, I'll go harass his harvester now. And then I realized, oh, he doesn't even have one. Well, I'll just stand on that Tiberium and, you know, make sure he can't put anything there. If he does build one while at the same time taking out his expensive guys, which, I mean, and now he's lost the match. I mean, all he can build is riflemen or a harvester eventually, which there's the harvester. I've got the first missile practically. I've got stuff to go harass his harvester to defend my guy while I harass his harvester. And that's exactly what I do. I only need one guy at the point to get my timer going. So I've got, you know, two rhinos fighting his guys. I am taking on... And I actually get off the point, which is bad. I should have stayed there. I was expecting to need to replace one of my guys sooner. And I was hoping to make sure I could at least kill that harvester. And honestly, I could have fired that first missile a long time ago. <clears throat> and then brought the rhino in. That was that was a huge mistake on my part. But again, I see he's got... He's still going heavy infantry. I have snipers. Snipers and rhinos. His rocket squads don't stand a chance. His jet troopers don't stand a chance. I even have snipers now protecting my one uh, pit bull. <coughs> my snipers are just going to tear up. He's got to get out his tech units. And to do that, he's got to spend 120 on the tech building. If you notice, he's not built a unit in a while. Oh, wait, there's some jet troopers. I, I thought he would save up for that tech building, but I think he, he can take out my vehicles, which he can, but he's going to lose to my snipers. 
I could easily replace those vehicles. Okay, now that my snipers have moved down, he's bringing disruptors. That's good, but I've got double snipers and a rhino on his guys. He puts down a turret. Again, that would have been good against my snipers, but not against the one thing it was shooting with the rhino. And now I'm chasing this one harvester off the Tiberium field. I built an anti-air unit. I don't even know. I think that was a mistake. I think I didn't mean to do that. And then I just decided to use it to go for his base. But, yeah, I mean, it was... It, big risk, big reward, or big fail. And, like I said, he was relying on me to either completely go after his harvesters, which I did not at the start, <coughs> to go for infantry, which I did not at the start. You know, if I had gone for War Factory Air first, anti-infantry stuff out of either of them, which is exactly what I did, I'm going to counter his stuff. His rush on my harvester failed, uh, and he tried to recover but he was never completely able to because of his high-tech build. If he did not have a high-tech build, I think he would have done, honestly, a lot better in that match. I think he would have had the opportunity to push me back with, you know, perhaps a war factory, a couple of cheap war factory stuffs, or even an airfield. <coughs> but this, that build he had was completely reliant on him killing my harvesters, getting out multiple harvesters, getting high-tech units, and then overwhelming. He wanted to rush me, and then overwhelm me with big units. And that rush, I honestly, probably will work about half the time. Because a lot of times you run into people doing infantry. And the few times they're not doing infantry, they might try to rush you with vehicles. Or they might not even know how to handle it. If I had handled that any differently, if I had focused, say, his disruptors instead of his uh, jet troopers. If I had not moved my guy out of there and you know blocked with it. He would have just had one more set of jet troopers and taken out my harvester and still been good. <clears throat> but, yeah, there's... Uh, and I, I still me messed up on that. I, I could have won a lot sooner. But that's why I called that one big risk. And sometimes you have to take those. There's a lot of times where, you know, anytime you're rushing, you're taking a big risk. Anytime you go for double harvesters, you're taking a big risk. And essentially what he was doing was a type of rush. So... Um, you build one scout before your harvester you take a little risk if you build harvester first and then a scout you're taking a little risk hoping that you can defend if he does go for a rush <clears throat> so no matter what you're doing you're taking some kind of risk the question is are you taking a little one or a big one and a lot of those big ones can pay off you start with a tank you go in right away he went double harvester or he decided to go for you know a rhino or buggy at the beginning that tank is going to trash that vehicle trash his harvester um, and you could easily, it, it, it could pay off big time, you know, then, and then you've got a hundred extra dollars, you got a tank on the field, your harvester's out, you know, making money, he's needing to rebuild his, which puts him another unit behind, <coughs> and you could easily fall back or pump out more units, you know, take the first missile, so, so much could work in your favor with a rush, you know, you could start with pit bulls or attack bikes, rush in there, if you take out his harvester, that's a huge, huge boom for you. Um, or like he was doing, start with jet, jet, bleh, jump jet troopers. I mean, barracks, that's 30. Uh, disruptors, it's 40, so that's 70 right there. He only had to wait for 30 points to build the jet troopers. <clears throat> with as fast as they go across the map, they get there about the same time as his disruptors. That works out quite well. And I mean, you're going to make at least 10 or 20 points in just the time it takes to build the uh, your second unit anyway. So really, he was only behind on the second unit by, you know, as long as it takes him to generate 10 points. <coughs> so, I mean, it, it, was, it was a good rush. But as I said before, big risk, big reward. And that one did just, just didn't work out for him. Good player, though. Now, I'm going to show you just this last one that I did here. That I lost. No, I won this one against Davo from the Order. So we're actually going to do a six. This is in the top five. But this is how <coughs> I did a double harvester build. Now, I didn't do double harvesters at the start. No, no, no. But I've got my early game stuff <coughs> to harass and hold off. <coughs> and if need be, potentially win all on its own. But I'm still at a huge disadvantage, hoping to get that second harvester at the right moment and use it to pump out the expensive units and win the game.
And we actually have a very similar build here. I go for scout, anti-infantry. He goes for attack bikes, which actually counters me. So, you know, I'm, I'm countered at this point, and he could harass my harvester. He could do a lot of stuff. But I pull back, <clears throat> and he decides to, I guess, go for the point and pop out some infantry instead of pr pushing his vehicles, which is actually a good thing because I had a tank to try to counter his guys. And rocket squads probably would have been better for him. You know, he, he knew I had a war factory. He didn't need, he, there was no reason to assume... You know, rifle unless he was just didn't want to go in blind with rocket squads, and he really needed a scout. Um. Anyway, we got just a little, a little micro trying to get the right units fighting the right ones. And his attack bikes fighting my scorpion tank was not the right one. His uh, <coughs> laser squads were able to kill my already damaged buggy. And I, I did get out my harvester on the first missile here, not the second. I didn't wait too long because I thought I was going to hold him off longer. And I'm using my weak tank to try to keep him back. Honestly, if he just pushed up, he could kill that tank. He could harass my harvester. He could bring his other tank down, damaging my tank. He, you know, But he would have to give up the points for that, which would give me more time. And if I was able to defend my harvesters, I would then be able to pump out the big guys. Now, <clears throat> because I went for the second harvester so early, I didn't get that first missile. I also didn't think I was going to be getting it anyway. But now I've got my tech units. Now I'm able to push him back. And like I said, after that first missile went off, if I didn't have the second harvester, that would have been the perfect time to build it. The moment that missile is launching, okay, build the second harvester then. <clears throat> I didn't do that, though. I built it early. I lost the first missile, but now I have to win the next two. Have to, have to, have to. At this point, though, I'm able to counter his guys with expensive tech units. Now... My expensive tech units are not only winning, but they're also buffing each other. Flamers are a good counter for my infantry. If he spams the flamers, I would have to build buggies, and you know that he could counter with tanks, and his stealth tanks could do a lot. <clears throat> but he doesn't exactly spam the flamers, and he could real easily. He could build flamers. He could summon flamers. Actually, I don't know if he could build flamers. We'll have to look after this. Maybe he can't build any, and that's why he's building riflemen and buggies, which is the best thing he could do. Summoning flavor, flamers would be real good. But he's got two stealth tanks, and that's a supportive unit. It's a hit and run. You don't really want to most of the time. If I went for, like, a huge air build, he's got nothing else for air. Now he's got three, three stealth tanks. They need to fall back after they kill stuff, or they're going to die because they, they can't stay on a point very well. And I try to get my guys over here, and he does really good microing. I'm actually getting annoyed because I'm like, move, 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 move. <laughs> and the whole time he's reloading. I should have moved my confessors off, used their bonus to support my... Their bonus makes my guys 50% stronger. That passive ability is so overpowered. And I do manage to, you know, eventually get a stealth tank, kill the buggy with my guys. and He needs to build riflemen or flamers to counter them. Um, the cyborgs and the confessors can fight infantry pretty good. Now he finally goes for a lot of riflemen. You know, I've gotten a missile. I've turned around. This next missile is going to come very quickly. So he's got to push us back fast. Flamers and riflemen. The riflemen need to focus on the cyborgs. The flamers need to kill the confessors. I haven't seen a flamer in a while. And here's another cool tip. This is a, this is a big one. You guys will love this. So, my audio should not be. Okay, good. I don't think my audio is working anyway. Anyway, <clears throat> but big tip, if you summon a flamer, it resets your build timer on your rifleman. So build a bunch of riflemen. Oh, I can't build for a while. I've got to wait. Summon the flamer. Now you can instantly build another rifleman. So you actually get free rifleman with your flamer. A lot of people don't know that. So if he had spam with those uh, riflemen like he did and then summon the flamer behind my uh, confessor to, you know, take that out and then built another rifleman right away, he would have had... A full extra two units more than he did. And while I was killing those riflemen, which I barely won that with the Confessor, his one extra rifleman plus his flamer would have been enough while they're not even getting shot at to trash my Confessor, make it significantly weaker. And then when he did finally get to turn and shoot on them, he would have been, you know, too weak. And then I just would have had one tech unit to try to fight off whatever else he built, which, again, with all those units dead, he could have easily gone Riflemen, flamers, or something like that. Okay, he couldn't build flamers, so riflemen. He could summon them, though, and he was not summoning them every chance he got. <coughs> he did summon one at the end, but it was a little too late, and it was by itself. He went way, way, way too heavy on the stealth tanks, and I did not have enough vehicles for him to do that. One stealth tank, if it died, maybe replace it with another one, that would have been good. He should have never had three at a time out. 
Uh, there was, especially when I'm going for infantry. I did build an air unit at the end there to sort of support my infantry from behind, because my two infantry are frontline guys. All my army is frontline guys except for my stealth tank and my air unit. I didn't ever have both of them at the same time. <clears throat> but yeah, he had three supportive units. And then he got an army of infantry and built another supportive unit, which is against vehicles while trying to fight infantry, instead of using his flamer and then getting the extra free rifleman which would have turned the tide of battle on there. So huge tips for the Flamers and also for if you do use a tech building on how to do it. Um, like I said, this build, it focuses completely on the buggy tank. I, I need to be able to completely fight his infantry with my buggies and his vehicles with my tanks. If he does go for air, my buggies can not actually fight air, but they're not great at it. If he starts building banshees or bombers right off the bat, I'm actually in trouble. But I could save up a little money and then pop out the stealth tanks. So I could continue fighting with that tanks and buggies and then do stealth. Now, the stealth tank <clears throat> normally on its own, as you saw, might not kill something in one hit. However, with this hero that I've got, her fanaticism, I can increase its damage by 75%. Since it's burst damage, 75% of four missiles, that's essentially saying that you're going to be firing seven missiles worth instead of four. It's going to one-hit any vehicle or air unit in the game. I mean, yeah, it's going to fire all four to do that, but it will do it. In some cases, it will do it like a lot better. It'll fire like two, kill something, two, kill something. <clears throat> so it, it her power is extremely useful in combination with that stealth tank. You bring over big vehicles, I can wipe them out. You bring over big air, I can wipe them out. That means you are stuck fighting with infantry against buggies, which are anti-infantry, and tanks. Um, so you, you're an army of rocket squads, essentially, or zone troopers or something like that would be your best bet. Um, or if you just did massive vehicles and chased down my stealth tank, because my stealth tank was a hit and run, but I would be able to counter that with my tank. Or again, massive air. Uh, <coughs> that it could hamper me. Um if you just did a whole bunch of, say, Banshees or GDI Bombers or something of the like, <clears throat> this deck would have problems with that. And again, there's risk versus reward. Uh, but the reason I'm focusing on just vehicles is, again, keeping it cheap, one unit, one building to produce my stuff. I'm a little vulnerable, but I could still handle most things, even if I never go tech. Um, <clears throat> and then if I do go tech, which I should, this is a, the double tech build, I mean, even my power is cheap, so I should be able to save up the money to get out of Tech Lab, even with one Harvester if I need to. Although I probably won't be able to get out a bunch of Tech units with a single Harvester unless we go into a third missile timer. <coughs> but for the first one, definitely I'm not going to have any Tech units. Um, for the second missile, I could have Tech, or I could not have Tech. The third one, I should be able to get out some Tech. Uh, but the Tech units I have, because you're building all anti-vehicle... I'm coming out with that heavy infantry and potentially air. And also looking at her power. Her power, not only will it work really good with the stealth tank, but if I don't have a stealth tank, it'll work really good with the uh, regular tank. <clears throat> I could use it on the buggy, but that's not a good idea. It's it's giving me 60% of a 30 cost unit for additional 30. I would be better off buying another buggy. That being said, if I can't produce buggies fast enough, it is useful for dealing with infantry. Um... But once I get my tech stuff out, her power is extremely useful. Using it on the cyborg, that's a 75% damage buff. If I already have my uh, my buff infantry next to it, giving it a 50% buff. 50% to a cyborg now it's 150. 75% of that it stacks. I think. I think. Don't quote me on it. But even if it's just base, now your cyborgs are double damage. Double damage. Let me say that one more time. Actually, it's more than double damage because it's 50 plus 75. It's 125% additional damage. <clears throat> so for, for 110 on another unit just sitting back at standby, and then 30, which is 140 total, I'm making this 120, 130 cost guy significantly more than what he normally is. It's just completely overpowered. You're coming at me with air. Both of those infantry will decimate your air with... Stealth tank support still to decimate your air. Your air is toast. You come at me with vehicles. I've already been having tanks to fight your vehicles. I've already had stealth tanks support to fight your vehicles. My cyborgs will devastate as they're now 
Already they devastate almost any vehicle, and then you make them twice as good, your vehicles stand no chance. As you saw, I was able to push back his vehicles. They couldn't do anything against me. And yes, while they're not good at fighting infantry, basic riflemen, they will beat 1v1. He'll have to you know, use something like three or four riflemen to beat them. Three or four units to beat one is not a good number. Now, um, that being said, when I make my guy twice as strong, now you need something like seven, eight riflemen in order to beat him. That is ridiculous. You're not going to beat him with riflemen alone unless you can separate my guys. <clears throat> so, I mean, and that, and that's assuming that he's fighting on his own with those buffs. I also have the other infantry unit that's the 110 that's giving him that buff. That's good against infantry. It's not good against, like, you know, vehicles. It's not going to win against the rhino. Actually, it'll probably win against the rhino. <clears throat> but just barely, and for its cost, it's not a good way to counter vehicles. But it's good against again, air as well, and infantry. So I'll just rotate them, try to get him to fight the infantry if it's something more threatening, like a flamethrower. Um, and he will win against a flamethrower, but not against two. Uh, and, you know, 80 and two units. That's the thing, though. You have to build multiple units in order to beat my guys. Multiple units. Um, your best bet against them is going to be snipers. And you don't see a lot of people building snipers. <laughs> or Disruptors, which is another late-game thing. Um, and even then, I've got my air unit. So, you know, first you're building an anti-vehicle. Now I'm coming at you with infantry and vehicles. Oh, you start building some anti-infantry and vehicles. You know, somehow you're managing to handle that. I bring in my air unit. My air unit is anti-vehicle only. If you don't have any vehicles, it might seem like a bad unit to build. However, if you don't have any anti-air it can throw you for a serious loop. And what I will do, I've won a game with that unit alone in combination with this leader's power because it, it has an amazing overpowered ability when fighting bases. If I could sneak that across to your base, one square away from your base, I could start shooting at it. Now here's the thing, it takes like three seconds to charge up. And unlike other things where they hit multiple units or something, it's charge up does it do that, but it's charge up lets it do 500% more damage. So and normally it's not even necessarily that great against the base, but when you go up to 500% more damage, <clears throat> it's doing like a thousand damage a second DPS, you know, so it might normally take 50 seconds to kill the full base. If you fire the first missile or got a missile, you know, now it's going to take 25 seconds. But when you multiply that by five times, that 25 seconds has now been dropped to five seconds. You've got five seconds before this one unit will completely trash your base. If I can get now, yes, it takes three seconds to charge up. So actually, it's more like eight seconds, minus about a second for other things. So you're looking at seven seconds <clears throat> in reality, give or take. But you know, the fanaticism increases it by an additional 75% of all that. That stacks. It stacks, people. And that makes it absolutely ridiculous against the base. At 75% more, that's almost cutting that five seconds in half. So now you're looking at once it's charged up, you'll be able to trash it in like two, three seconds. Two to three seconds. I mean, it's unless you're already attacking it, it's over. Unless you're already attacking it or you have something you could summon right next to it that can one-shot it. It is over. The The issue is it's got to charge up. Also, because the 75% is stacking, and stacking a 75% on a 1,000 is not that useful, don't use fanaticism on it unless you're trying to get it across the map quickly before you can notice it or build something um, until after that three-second charge. So it comes over, starts damaging the base. He sees tick, 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 you know, nothing for three seconds. Then use fanaticism, because even if he's shooting it with guys, you use fanaticism, you're taking extra damage. 25% extra damage for those three seconds might mean your guy doesn't do a lot of damage later on. You know, 500 with 75% more. 75, that's going to be an additional 150, 300... 375. So it's actually going to be 875% more damage. 875 when you combine his ability fully charged with fanaticism. <clears throat> and 
like I said, you just wait the three seconds till it charges up. Use fanaticism. That base is going to drop in two to three seconds. And if if you use it beforehand, that's three additional seconds where he can try to do twenty five percent more damage. So he could essentially do, you know, significantly more damage to you if you use it beforehand. Now, again, if you can use it to get over there quickly, that's useful. You're using it for its speed advantage. Um, but once you're firing, if you're already firing, don't use it right away. Especially if he's summoning rocket squads. Don't forget about, oh, I need to do as much damage as possible. Fanaticism. Don't do that. Activate your fanaticism and hover over that unit and wait, wait for the moment that thing's fully charged to its uh, 500%, then use it. Bam. Melt his base. Faster than any flamethrower. Faster than any flame tank. I I've had a flame tank actually attacking my base. And it, it took like six seconds to take down my whole base. Um, and like I said, this thing once charged takes like two. So, you know, yeah, it, it only looks like it's doing a little bit. His flame tank's doing a lot more. Oh, he's going to kill your base first. Then, boom, fully charged. It's going quickly. Fanaticism instantly gone practically. It is a great uh, potential win. Now, it will, it could take out a full base, yes, which, again, a lot, because once you've already got it fully charged, you know, it might take a total, like I said, of seven seconds to take out half, because you got the three charged, and then a couple more, maybe maybe as low as five with your fanaticism, uh, depending on other things. But um, after that, it might only take, like, another three or four seconds to take out the whole second half of the base. So depending on the situation, you could actually take a game where he's got the first missile, you've teched up, you're in trouble, there's no way you're going to win on the ground, build an air unit, he's got nothing to counter air, don't kill his guys, just fly right over him, he builds something, event. by the time you get over there, to counter air, let it, you know, charge up, fanaticism, oh, he launched the missile, Pfft. so what, it's going to take that missile like three to five seconds to land, I could take out a full missile's worth in that amount of time. Not to mention if I've already taken out the first half, and I've got the... Fin yeah. <coughs> that being said, you have to, he has to have no anti-air. One pit bull, this thing is down. One anti-air talon, one banshee, this thing will not even make it to his base if he does it right. No less have the three seconds to charge up. That is the hard part, getting to his base and charging up for three seconds. That is the only reason this unit is not completely overpowered, especially with her ability in tow. Um, but also it works, like I said, in combination really good with, say, your upgraded infantry. You've got the infantry that buffs other infantry, the uh, confessors. They're good against infantry and air. You bring in one of those behind it, now you're good against infantry, air, and tanks. Great supportive unit, very good combo. So it has multiple uses in this army. And I just want to show you a double harvester army at late game that army is so overpowered it is ridiculous the problem is getting the harvesters protecting them getting to that late game you don't want to rush it too soon i kind of rushed it too soon on that one but i didn't think i was gonna get the first missile anyway so i gave up on it essentially for the next two <clears throat> hope you guys enjoyed hope some of these tips will help you in your future games Feel free to copy any of my army designs. If you have any uh, better ones or ones that you've tried out that are similar that you want to share, let me know in the comments. Any advice is welcome advice. Constructive criticism is a plus. And happy hunting.